How's it going, my bakers? Welcome to another laminated puff pastry video. Today, we're making pan raisin, aka escargot, aka raisin bread. It is a flaky, buttery pastry filled with custard and plump raisins, flavored with a little bit of orange and cinnamon. It originated in France and is a very popular breakfast pastry in Europe. We'll use a similar method and a similar recipe for the pastry as the one I used for the quinamon recipe. So if you already made that one, this one will be breeze. Also, the hydration is lower here, so it's easier to handle. So if you have not made the quinamon, and if you're not too confident yet, this will be the perfect starting point. Here's what we need. For the dough, we need some white bread flour, water, yeast, salt, sugar, a little bit of butter. For the custard, we'll need milk, sugar, egg, butter, cornstarch, and vanilla. To create the layers in the pastry, we'll need some more butter. Split it up into two equal portions and freeze it. For the raisins, we'll need some raisins, cinnamon, an orange, which we'll use the orange zest and orange juice from. For the icing, we'll need some icing sugar and some juice from that orange as well. And last but not least, we'll need an egg for glazing. This will give the pastries a nice rich color. So let's get to it. Let's start by preparing the raisins. We want to make them nicely flavorful and juicy. So in a small bowl, combine the raisins, the cinnamon, the zest of the whole orange, and then the juice from half of that orange. Mix it all up and then leave the raisins to soak. And whilst they're soaking, mix them a couple of times to ensure that they absorb all of the orange juice. Alright, let's leave these on the side and let's move on to making the custard. This is the easiest custard you will ever make. We're not gonna mess around with tempering the eggs and heating things up separately, none of that nonsense. Those methods are more useful when you're serving the custard hot and when you need it to be extra smooth. If you're going to bake it, it does not matter. So all the ingredients can go in the pan at the same time. Your egg, cornstarch, sugar, vanilla, butter and milk. Place the pan on medium to high heat and cook stirring continuously for about 3-4 to four minutes until it thickens. And once it becomes thick, it is done. From start to finish, this custard takes no more than 5 minutes to make. And if you weigh out all your ingredients straight into the pot, then you'll save yourself a bunch of washing up too. Cover the custard so that the cling film is touching the surface and refrigerate it until needed. But let's get to the dough. My kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm using my water at the same temperature. I'm aiming for final dough temperature of around 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This should get me there. To make the dough, in a large bowl, combine the water, yeast, salt, sugar and melted butter. Give it all a good mix to dissolve the salt and sugar completely. Then add the flour, grab your dough scraper and mix it to a dough. Unlike the quinamon dough, this one won't be very sticky. The hydration is relatively low. I still like to wet my hands with water when handling a dough like this. And I always like to give it a fold after mixing it up and before placing it in a clean bowl. This makes it nice and smooth and starts building some tension. Ok, once you're done, take the temperature just to see where you're at. Around 24 degrees Celsius is what I was aiming for and that's about what I got. Bulk fermentation will take 1 hour, it will be punctuated by 2 folds. Cover your dough up, leave it to ferment for 20 minutes and then give it the first fold. Lately, I've been folding my dough up in the air, it works pretty well. Pick the dough up, then fold the sides down and then push them back up into the center of the dough until the dough ball becomes nice and tight. I like this method because the dough doesn't need to touch the table, which means that we don't need to clean up as often. Okay, after the first fold, place the dough back into the bowl, cover it up and leave it to ferment for another 20 minutes, and then perform the second fold, which goes exactly the same way as the first fold. And then once again, cover the dough up, then leave it to ferment for another 20 minutes to finish off the bulk fermentation. Now we can start creating the buttery layers. Place the dough on the table and dust it generously with flour on all sides and then roll it out to a large rectangle. You don't need to measure it, but if you want to, you can. About 40 by 30 centimeters or around 16 by 12 inches will do. Try to make the edges as straight as you can. Now take the first piece of butter from the freezer and grate it as evenly as you can all over the surface of the dough. Now dust your hands with some flour so they don't stick and press the butter into the dough. Next, fold it up into three layers. After the first fold, we'll wrap it up in some cling film and leave it in the fridge to chill down for around 30 minutes. During this time, the dough will relax and it will be a lot easier to work with. After the first 30 minutes of chilling, remove the dough from the fridge, then dust it generously with flour once again. And roll it out again to a large rectangle, about the same size as the first time. We are going to repeat the exact same steps as during the first fold. Grab the second piece of frozen butter from the freezer and grate it as evenly as you can all over the dough. Then dust your hands with flour, 
press the butter into the dough and fold the dough into three layers again. Only this time we are not going to immediately refrigerate it after the first fold. We are going to perform a couple more folds. So after the second fold, you want to roll the dough out to a large rectangle and fold it up into three layers two more times. This will ensure that the pastry turns out nice and flaky and light. After all the folds, wrap the dough up in cling film again and leave it in the fridge to cool down for at least one hour. If you want, you can prepare this dough a day or two ahead of time, but one hour of chilling is minimum. Let's get a couple of things sorted before moving on to final shaping. First, remove the custard from the fridge and mix it up until it's nice and smooth. Next, let's make the icing. Combine the icing sugar and the orange juice and then whisk until smooth and then transfer it to a piping bag. Of course, the icing is optional, but it makes the pastries look extra fancy and it adds a little bit more of that orange flavor. You can make it or just leave it off, it's up to you. If you are gonna make it, tie up the piping bag and leave it on side for later. Do not refrigerate it, it'll be too hard. Yeah, let's move on to final shaping. Unwrap the dough, well, I guess it's pastry now. Dust it generously with flour on both sides and then, you guessed it, roll it out to a large rectangle. But this time, place it vertically in front of you. Dot the custard evenly all over the pastry. And then, use an offset spatula to spread it out evenly. If you don't have an offset spatula, your dough scraper should do the job just fine. Leave a little edge at the top, we'll use that to seal up the roll. Next, sprinkle the soaked raisins evenly all over the custard. Brush some water on the exposed edge of pastry at the top. And now roll it up. You want to roll it as tight as you can, but it's not going to be possible to make it very tight because the custard is quite soft. Still, as you roll it forward, pull it back once in a while and try to make it as straight as you can. Okay, now we're ready to cut this bad boy up. It is a little bit soft, so you need a very sharp knife to cut it. To make life easier, you could cover this roll and refrigerate it for about an hour before cutting it. I don't have that kind of patience. To cut it, trim the ends, optional, and then divide it into as many pieces as you like. Wipe the knife between cuts to avoid making a mess. I decided to cut my roll into six pieces, which resulted into absolutely gigantic pastries. I think eight or more would be better options. But then again, no one's gonna complain about their pastry being too big. Place the rolls on a non-stick paper lined baking tray and then flatten them a little bit using the palm of your hand. Final proof will take around an hour to an hour and a half. During the final hour of fermentation, you wanna preheat the oven, 170 degrees Celsius, 340 Fahrenheit, fan on. The snails have puffed up pretty well, they are ready for the oven. One last thing left to do is brush them with egg, generously. I brush the sides and the tops, twice. Now let's get these babies in the oven. They'll take around 25 minutes to fully bake. If your oven's a bit funny like mine and it bakes things more on one side than the other, then you definitely want to turn them around halfway through the bake to ensure that they all brown evenly. These things turned out huge. To be fair, I did not expect them to puff up this much. But that just means that they will be extra light and fluffy inside. Okay, let's finish off the bake, pull them out the oven, leave them on the rack to cool down before decorating with some orange icing and tucking in. To make things more efficient, you can make the pastry a day ahead of time like I mentioned earlier. You can even do the final proof in the fridge and bake them for breakfast. After cutting them up and placing them on the tray, I would suggest leaving them to proof at room temperature for 30-60 minutes before refrigerating them. On the next day, remove them from the fridge leave them out to warm up whilst the oven is preheating. And that is how you can have them freshly baked for breakfast. But no matter which time of day you eat them, they'll be delicious. Don't forget to check out the Pastries, Cakes and Sweet Bakes playlist for more delicious recipes like this one. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.